I picked up four wooden handle screwdrivers at a yard sale for three bucks. I thought this one was the most interesting of the group. It's made of steel, wood, and brass. What's not to like? I was also happy to find a maker's mark, except that it led to sort of a research failure. More about that maker's mark later. The wood handle was cracked, so it came apart pretty easily. Here's what the parts looked like after disassembly. I soaked the shaft in evaporost overnight. Notice how the tip is a darker shade of gray. I believe this shows where the metal has been hardened. I used the belt sander to clean up the shaft. I was careful not to sand the area around the maker's mark. Here's how the shaft looked after the belt sander. I was able to square off the tip pretty evenly. I then wet sanded the shaft using WD-40 as my lubricant. I think I started with 240 grit. Here's the shaft after sanding all the way down to 1000 grit. It's so shiny, it probably doesn't need any flits, right? Yeah, right. You know me better than that. Plus, I promised that tube of flits that it would see some action on my next restoration project. I used a socket to help me reform the slot in the brass furl. I also used the socket to help me hold the furl while I sanded it. I added a little electric tape to make a snug fit. After I sanded the furl down to 600 grit, I polished the brass with my Dremel and a fine Scotch-Brite disc. I think the tube of flits and I are back on good terms now. I decided to pull apart the crack section of the handle. Then I used wood glue to glue the pieces back together. After the glue had dried, I used a razor blade to scrape off the finish. I got quite a bit of old finish off by scraping. I find that scraping the finish first saves clogging up the sandpaper. Here's how the handle looked after sanding with 60 grit. I wasn't able to remove all of the staining from the old finish. And here's the handle sanded down to 320 grit. I used Minwax Dark Walnut to help hide the staining and the glue lines. And I used Birchwood Casey's True Oil Gunstock Finish over the stain. You rub it on, let it dry overnight, then scuff with super fine steel wool and recoat. I ended up putting three coats on this handle. Before I used clear epoxy to glue the parts back together, I put some grooves in the shaft to help hold the glue. Okay, let me take you back to the beginning. I was attracted to this screwdriver because it was made of my three favorite vintage tool materials, steel, wood, and brass. I think she turned out pretty good. I normally don't like glossy finish on wood, but I think it looks good on this screwdriver. I found three companies that may have used the WS and Company Maker's Mark. The first company I found was WS Manufacturing, Birmingham, Great Britain. This company was mostly known for manufacturing hand planes. I contacted the folks that run the WS Tools 
Birmingham collector's website and was assured that my screwdriver was not made by their WS company. I found some tools marked WS made by the William Schulhorn Company out of New Haven, Connecticut. This is the company that first sold the Bernard parallel jaw pliers. However, I was unable to find any evidence that this company ever made screwdrivers. Finally, I found a German company, Wilhelm Schmidt. It looks like they made wooden hand planes. Their maker's mark looks a lot like the one on my screwdriver. However, once again, I couldn't find any evidence that Wilhelm Schmidt ever made screwdrivers. I would love to hear from anyone who has a screwdriver with the same maker's mark as mine, or who can point me to a more definite idea of who made my screwdriver. I attempted some artsy craftsy outdoor photos of my finished project. I was inspired by the photographic skills of Armando and Resto Rob. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.